Now that bung, another thing I've done with that bung is to arrange it so it's just say a couple of mil above what I need it to be for that hole. So I know when I'm approaching that, this spout is starting to get to the point where I'm going to need to be a little bit more careful about exactly how much I'm going to take off. Now I can measure this, so I can get my tools out to measure this, uh, but the best measure, in my opinion, is the lid itself. I want to know if the lid fits to this. That hole was 11, 12 millimetres. This is going to go to 16, which is 4 millimetres more, which is only 2 millimetres aside. And that bung there is probably about 2 millimetres bigger than the hole that it's in, depending on whether it's an 11 or a 12 mil hole. So, the other advantage of doing it with this, of course, it doesn't cut to the side, the, um, uh, the scraper, whereas the parting tool would now be sometimes eating in a little bit into that left-hand side. Now, I don't want to do that because I don't want to take that down anymore. I know this isn't an exact science, but I could make things in exact without trying to make them in exact. So, uh, if I go for a reasonable amount of accuracy, uh, in terms of near as possible as I can get it, and that's what I'm going to go for. Now, this, like I said, it's a very old lathe. It's hundreds of years old, so I haven't got the parts, you know, for turning these things. So, um, sometimes they don't go as tight as I would like them to. So I really need to make something that will do that for me. Now, this is going to come down to 16 mil, like I say. You can, by the way, make the bevel on these sharper. Um, you can make them cut more. I tend to use mine as a nice, sort of, smoother, actually. So I'm only taking a little, sort of, light sanding off the top. Seal skin was used for sanding, by the way. That's mentioned at the time. Uh, I would imagine that's quite expensive stuff. I know sporums were made out of it quite recently. It's now illegal, so I can't get it anyway. But uh, even if I could get it, I think, you know, turning out... I mean, this is... GI stuff really isn't it to use an American term this is the kind of stuff that you're producing for all the soldiers you know so how much trouble are you really going to go to I think I'm not sure but uh, I like to make mine a good quality it's not that uh, I want to make them poor you know like a soldier's quality will be oh, way over there we're still at 20 I can afford to lose another two mil down there so I'm about halfway down to that bung aren't I and that's looking fairly smooth for me as well that so I think I might keep that you know rather than trying to skew that or anything I think I'll, do, I think I'll live with that bearing in mind that these are going to be um uh, which actually, I need to raise that up a little bit, don't I, for this scraper. But bearing in mind, these are, you know, sort of um, uh, going to be dipped in linseed oil three times, then, you know, and then used on campaign. I don't think I'm going to need anything any more smooth than that. And in fact, a lot of the ones that I do, in fact, I would say more, most of the ones that I do, are new model army ones that get painted anyway. So, I mean, paints are going to fill up any of these irregularities. I honestly don't think it's right to use sandpaper. It's a smooth finish. It's almost like the sandpaper anyway. So, uh, okay, I like things to be nice, but I honestly don't think I need to go that and that's cool. So, okay. Right. Let's get that down. So I'm being a little bit more careful now because I'm getting a bit closer to the point where I want to be. Okay, quite a bit taken off there. Actually, let's just test that. See what we've got now. What do we have before? We're 21. We're actually trying to go down to 16. I could set my calipers for this, but um, since I'm going to use the lid anyway, I'm not too bothered. Oh, we're getting nearly there. I'll just take a little bit more off and I'll take that bung out. And then what we'll do is we'll try and fit the lid and see if we can get it to fit on there. So let's see what we get. Just a little bit more off there. I have got a line in the middle of that there for some reason. I don't quite know why that is. It's uh, a line in the middle of this, what I'm going to call the um, spout, this is this is the bit that's going to go inside the lid, you see that slipping down there, that's my fault, I've got a little thing I've made here, if it's a bit loose I'll use that, so I'll just stick that in there, just get it tighten it up a little bit, just something I've contrived really, okay, now oh, trying to get this as quickly as I can, time's going by and uh, you know I've got a lot of videos, I've only got 15 minutes on a video, so I want people to be able to see in fairly decent time how these things are made. I think that line is actually a shade line here from the lights that I've got in here. So I should be okay with that one. Let's just test this now. Am I nearly there? I'm ever so nearly there. I'm sorry, just a little bit more. And in fact, I will just take that little bit of extra off there. One of the things that Joseph Markson will tell you, of course, is to wait for the, um, the wheel to come round before you start pressing, for obvious reasons, because yeah, you'll break the woodwork. On This one I've got here is a great big iron wheel. The one that's described in Moxon is actually a wooden wheel, a two and a half foot diameter wooden wheel. So I, I imagine most of the work on that one 
would be done really by the foot against it, you know, rather than, um, uh, you know, sort of rather than the sort of inertia of that fast spinning wheel. Take my bung out there, so have a look at that. Oh, it's come loose as well from there. Uh, that's not clever, but it should sit nicely back on there, so we're okay. So we've got the outside to that. Just um, see if I can find my lid now. I left it around here somewhere, I'm sure I did. Um, just want to check the lid in here it is over here this is the lid I made earlier you're watching uh, just have a look at that and we're still a bit away there really aren't we from getting that into there so I do need to take that down just a little bit more but I've got that off now so what I'll do is I'll just um, risk taking some of that away while I've actually got that off and then we'll gradually get ourselves into position the idea is of course it's going to fit snugly if you remember the top you know is slightly tapered at the um, at the back of it so the top of this spout here may well need to be slightly rounded now i'm not sure if they were rounded or if they became rounded you know from shoving into the lids so whether it's a shaping but some of them were square and some of them were rounded here so i'm not too sure about that but um uh can't really tell from the turnings you might find that lid again what did i do with that uh, I put it now. I to check it again. I put it somewhere, didn't I? Oh yes, here it is. Lid over here. So a quick twubs. Try that. No, I'm still only. It looks almost there, doesn't it? But it's probably a good millimetre here. Again, like I said, it's all about the kind of tools that you feel happy using. Some people wouldn't feel happy using a scraper in this way at all. Uh, might be tempted to use the skew. Um, the skew will take off a very light shading. You can see that there, it's coming off like, like sandpaper would take that off, isn't it, really? Uh, obviously, for reasons I've already mentioned, we won't be using sandpaper, so. Okay, notice I've sort of got it much sort of straighter now. I'm not taking as big cuts as I was before. Uh, nearly there. I want it absolutely perfect all the way along the length of this. And uh, once I've got that, it should jam at the end if I've got it right with my spindle gap there. Okay, so near, it must be so near. Okay, now there comes a point where I start to taper it a little bit towards the end of the spout, yeah, so it's more likely to fit in, and then I can take a little bit more off the back as I go along. So if the front starts to go on, oh, we're so close. So close. <laughs> right. Right. You'll be careful of now. If you lose a bit of patience now, you sort of think, oh, come on, I'm nearly there. And then you do a little bit more than you should do. That could be just the moment when you've gone a little bit too far over. Now, many apologies for those people who are, you know, professional turners and are watching this and bored to death thinking, what on earth is he doing now? I could have done that in half the time. Anybody could, an electric lathe, parting tool, you know, sort of whack, 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 you know, skew down or whatever, choose the uh, tool you choose, and then jobs are good, doesn't it? Um, anyhow, what I'm trying to do here is demonstrate, as I've said lots of times before, how I believe this would have been made actually in the 17th century for the soldiers. I did notice, by the way, the other day, um, I forget which book I was reading, I think it was one of the Osprey books. Uh, it might not be, it might be one of Brigadier Peter Young's books where he was describing, in fact it was, it was actually Edge Hill by Brigadier Peter Young. And uh, in, I met Brigadier Peter Young, not a friend by the way, I've met him, and mine's a signed copy that I've got, not that he gave it personally to me. Um, I'm a member of the same organisation, of course, that, uh, that he founded, which is the uh, Seal Knot. So, anyway, I was reading through his book, having named dropped Brigadier Pigeon, who I don't even know personally, by the way, uh, or didn't know, he's died now, of course. Uh, and he gives um, an actual price for a turner, a, uh, a wage per day, of one shilling and six, which is not actually at the bottom of the, um, of the pecking order. I forget exactly what it was on a par with now, but I think carters and things like that were, were paid just a little bit more. Uh, gunners were paid more than that, which surprised me, because I know basic soldiers weren't, you know, like, um, you know, pikemen and musketeers. Not, I'm not surprised that gunners were paid more than pikemen and musketeers, of course, but I am surprised, really, that there's um, such a difference there. I think, looking at that line on there, I think my scraper must have a bit of a, 
a mark on it somewhere because it seems to be leaving that line in there and that isn't a shade line I don't think at all. So come on, we must be there. Let me just check how tight that is. That might be pretty good, you know, actually, so let's just check that. Sometimes friction heats things and then it won't fit for that reason. I can't jam that on too tight because it will split this wood. And I have found one, by the way, in the Leeds Armouries that is split. You see that'll go in there, that's, that's really quite nice and tight. But if I push that in just a little bit further, you can see that bevel in there. That's going to cause me a problem and it's going to split it because that wood there really, really is quite thin. Yeah. In fact, one way that I used to do this was to leave the lid intact. You know, so that I hadn't turned it down first, and then what I do is jam the lid on and then turn the whole thing down. The only problem is that there's this resistance against it, and it doesn't spin anything like as easily as you might like it to. So it didn't work very well for me. That you might want to try it though. Doesn't mean to say it's wrong. Okay, just take that, just that fraction off. Now another thing you have to remember when you're doing this is that these hung from strings, so it's not a case of this having to fit tight or anything like that because the strings would hold it in position, you're not going to lose it anyway, and you want to be able to get it on and off fairly easily as well, so you don't want it to be too tight there. And the other, you hear that pop there? That's one of my favourite sounds, that's lovely, that means you've got it really good and it's really spot on there, but again I can't risk... That sort of, I think there's a bit of a bump there that it's going to make it split there when it gets into there. And I don't want that, but I am going to have to do a bit of rounding there to fit there into that radius there. So, okay, let's get this around again. And I'll just uh, see if I can take a bit off that back end there. Okay. Obviously, I want it to be sort of fairly level all the way down, so it slides nicely up and down there. Okay. Now, let's just test that now. This is the most tricky part, by the way. The rest of it, well, it's not the most tricky. It's the most tricky part about what I'm doing now. Next, um, all the rest is just shaping the outside. So that's a fairly easy thing to get done. So it's worth just taking a little bit of time just to make sure that you get that one right. Now, you can't really see that, but that's very, very tight on there. So you, the camera can't really come around the other side. It's a bit difficult. So I'm going to take that little bit off because, like I said, that is still a little bit tight on there. And like I said, I don't want that to be splitting. Now, uh, anybody that buys these, um, the woods do, do change, and um, I don't know if you can uh, see around, but um, I do have, um, you know, sort of logs in here as well. So, I mean, if you're cutting from wet wood, then you're going to find that it changes its shape after you've done it anyway. So, and of course, all wood was cut from wet wood anyway, unless it had been in storage by mistake or whatever, but generally... You know, and the turners were getting orders for masses of these, 3,000 belts, etc. You know, so that is fitting really quite tightly there now, just beautifully tightly there. It's going all the way down as well, and that will be hitting that bevel there because I've measured that at 16 mil. But it is just still, I think, just a little bit too tight for a musketeer when he's reloading his uh, musket to be able to fire. And I don't think this is going to be a new model army one. If this is going to be a new model army one, I might make it so it is a little bit tight. I don't know what I might do. He's making out of wet wood, so it'll swell, and then when he gets onto the battlefield, he's going, oh no, I can't get the bolt off, and I can't fire. So, all my friendly royalists all blown to pieces, but uh, anyway, there you go, that's just a personal opinion. Well, I don't think the new model army will be buying any more from me after that, do you really? But, okay, I think now, we should have that about right. Let's just check that. Okay. Now, I think that's uh, pretty tight there. That there is a little bit, just I think still, even now, still just a little bit on the tight side. Now, it is tight at the back, you know, it's not actually on the inside there. So, what I'm going to have to do is still take a little bit more off there. Isn't that amazing? It's taking so long just to get that just right. My worry is that what it is, it's this that's catching and not the back. But it does look to me as though it's that back part there that's just holding things up for me a little let just shave just a little bit out. You see how it comes off the back first? I'm putting it on so lightly at the back, and then what happens is the shavings creep up towards the front as it levels it, because I want the whole thing to be level, of course. What I don't want is bumps in it. I'll see if we manage to get that for some reason. You see how that's still spinning there? So that will spin, and that will come loose with time, that as well, yeah, from use. So that's looking like a really, really good one. That's a nice fit. You're not going to spill any powder out of that. It's easy enough to get that out of there, and that is going to be a nice, perfect fit.